Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods of the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four of us play D&D in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy, and I will be portraying the world of Icewind Dale and its many inhabitants. Joining me are three of my favorite humans playing some of the characters in that world. I'm Scala. I play Wink Wuggins. I don't really have a funny quip. Um, I'm a very serious country banjoist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Andy. I play Everett, the Reborn Ranger, who doesn't really have a problem with taking a schmucky guy's money and may or may not do what he tells him to do. Here, here. And I'm Jimmy. I play Jib, the CL fighter, who is always polite, sometimes threateningly so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not scared. I mean, I'm terrified. I'm very intimidated. You should be. Can you intimidate people into checking out our socials? Can can you can Jib do a quick intimidation? All right, let's see. I'm going to roll here. That's actually a 19. Holy shit. So yeah. go ahead and say something. That means it happens, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's see. You know, you can help us out by uh, finding us on Patreon or Twitter. Or, you know, you could not do that. Go about your life and we'll be okay. <laughs> that was guilt trip intimidation. <laughs> I think it's one of the better deliveries we've ever done to grovel and beg for attention on social media. So we'll keep it at that. And without any further ado, episode six. After a fraught ride to Bryn Shander with their prisoner, Isaac, our heroes decided to let him free in the city streets. From there, they delivered their report to not only their handler, Kessa, but directly to the head of Vitas, Garen Kang and the client, Felwarosh himself, alongside his guard, Drog. Despite having not solved the murders yet, our heroes were quickly tasked with a new assignment, to participate in an upcoming debate between two candidates, Tragen and Roman, with guidance to bolster Tragen's outcome as much as possible. Our party then retired for the evening, a rift seeming to form between them as they each consider what this new day means for them and for the people of Icewind Dale. Woof. Woof indeed, my friend. <laughs> we will kick off after hopefully all have cooled off a little bit. <laughs> it is the next morning. You all are free to meet up at the downstairs of this place or in someone's room or outside. Otherwise, you were told where this debate will be and you can start to make your way there. This is sort of an afternoon, evening activity, right? It's going to be outside, daylight, afternoon. Well, we have a lot of day to work with. Before the debate? Yeah. Probably have a little bit of time. Yeah, you could screw around at the tavern and have a drink or something like that. Yeah. Off mic, you want to do some shopping, my friend? Is that what you want to do? Yes. Okay, you can do some fucking shop. That's fine. Thanks. I'm going to keep that on mic. That's funny. Yeah, that does not... I was yeah. actually going to say that's great. You want to do some shopping? You got shopping all day. Brooks Brothers, whatever you want. Walmart. Everett is desperate to resupply. Okay. You have more than enough time to do that on your way. Since, as you put it, not only our handlers, but we got paid... <laughs> So You got cash to fucks with. Yeah. Well, you two got paid. You didn't get paid? I mean, I got 20 gold. I didn't get 300 gold like didn't you guys. You get 300. Because uh, I'm a good person. Wink's a person of principle. <laughs> Are you not part of this job? Well, I didn't agree on the spot to muck around with the political process. Mm. I think Jimmy was trying to say that in character. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> You find that voice. Does that mean you're not part of the job, Wink? Well, yeah, I don't think so. I thought I expressed myself. I think I'm going to be looking for another sort of employment. I'm not fond of what I've heard about the places where Fail Barash has his fingers. And if Vetus is going to be working for him, I don't think that's the kind of business I want to be associated with. You know I tend to agree with you right now. You know, I'm on the job. Whispers of Clark hang in the air. Am I really doing the character voice that badly tonight? No, 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 no. I'm saying like, Clark is a man of the job. You oh. know, like that kind of vibe. <laughs> Not character voice at all. Don't worry about that. Meanwhile, while they're talking about this... I just want to ask real quick, are you all like talking and walking, basically? Everett would have left much earlier in the morning than whenever they would have had this conversation. Yeah, all right. We can jump over to Everett. Sounds like you have a lot of patience for when you might get some shopping done. So let's... <laughs> Thanks, Jeppy. What the fuck do you want to buy? <laughs> Let's just get, <laughs> get some shopping done already. Well, listen. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so Everett has been thinking over much of the night about what Wink said, really taking their words a lot more seriously than a lot of their previous conversations. He doesn't quite know why, but it's something that's been on his mind. 
And so he's doing a little a little shopping to, 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 to stop thinking about that all of that. <laughs> so to to assuage some maybe lingering guilt that Wink has instilled in his brain, he's going to spend the money. No, he's not going to admit that. But <laughs> oh, okay, he's not there yet. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. I won't bemoan him the retail therapy that he needs to get through this moment psychologically. First thing he wants to do is find... An elephant is 200 gold pieces. <laughs> well, listen, he really likes to be good at his job, and this seems to be a town that's got a lot going on compared to a lot of the other little rickety places that this band has been through in the past couple of days. First thing he's going to do is look for an armorer or a weaponsmith of some kind. In Brinchinder, I'm not going to make you do any rolls. You can find basically more or less anything you'd like. You just let me know what you're looking for, and we can talk cost. Elephant! Elephant! <laughs> Get one of those barrages. <laughs> Get a barrage, yes! I will say that while it is a big city, the survivability of specific animal types in the tundra <laughs> is not something that is so malleable. Yeah, maybe a, a mammoth <laughs> or a giant boar, but I am not that kind of ranger. <laughs> so I'm looking for studded leather armor, first of all, or anything magical. But I'm just going to start with what I assume is going to be around, which is non-magical shit. Cool. You can walk into an armor and let's just uh, one second here. Jeppy's got a Google leather cost. Oh, I already did that. Don't you worry. That was very discreet. No, I have to Google my brain for an NPC name. You walk <laughs> into this weapon and armor smith shop. You see a pretty tall goblin, like tall for a goblin. Hello. Flint McRocky here. How you doing? Okay. A plus. A plus. <laughs> I typed in Flint, and then the next thing was Stone, and I'm like, all right, Rock. Rocky. McRocky. And that's, <laughs> for those listening, aspiring DMs, that's how you make character names. That's how they're all made. All right, you're next to Flint McRocky. What would you like to ask? Are you the one who have made all of these fine weapons and armors? Smith, proprietor, and bookkeeper. Flint McRocky, indeed. Well, I am interested in some of your studded leather. Yeah, we, we got that. Anything else? You just coming for the one thing? Well, since you have asked, I am also looking for any arrows that may be enchanted, or at the very least, stronger than the usual fletching you may find in your everyday armory. As you say the word enchanted, you notice Flint rolls his eyes. <laughs> you and everybody else. Everybody looking for enchanted works these days. Hmm. Haven't met much of that lately. You are uh, not from around here, I'm guessing. Of that you are correct. But I assure you, and I take out the little pouch of gold and place it on the counter, I have the means to oblige for the goods. His eyes widen at the sight of the gold. Oblige, I will absolutely accept, but what I cannot accept is giving you anything enchanted. We don't have much of that lately. Haven't you been made aware that magic isn't something we do as much around here these days? I'm not able to even stock enchanted items anymore. Please, Mr. McRocky, do... Got him! <laughs> do elaborate. You speak as if this was once a common thing, and now it's not. I mean, yeah, who didn't use magic in Icewind Dale? But, you know, lately it's just kind of been frowned upon. And, you know, outside of Bryn Shander, I can't speak, right? The small towns, they got a little less red tape. But, you know, we're the city. We're the big kids. And we ascribe to what the big wigs say quicker than anybody else. Yeah, not allowed to sell magic items. I see. Perhaps we can make a different arrangement. Roll persuasion. As I tap my hand on the gold, I simply wish to be as good at my job as I can. I am sure you can understand this, given, well, as you say, the situation that so many in Icewind Dale seem to find themselves in. And I roll a flat 16. On a flat 16, he taps the pouch that you've laid out in front of him. I like to be good at my job, too. Specifically this part tapping the, the coins. What did you have in mind? I have spent a lot of time traveling with merchant caravans along the Black Road. Perhaps you have heard of this, but in my travels there, every once in a while, I would find a very powerful, very sharp arrowhead or two. It has been some time since I have had, and I take out some of my arrowheads, something with a little more force. For me, it ain't about the rules, it's about the access. 
quite simply, I can't even manufacture this stuff, let alone get my hands on anything. But I'll tell you what, two things I can do for you. One, you can get me some raw materials, ores, anything of that nature. I might be able to work something out for you for a cost, and we'll figure that out later. Two, I think I got something in the back I might be able to supply you with. Let me go take a look. He comes back a few moments later, and he drops another pouch on it. You can open it up and roll Arcana for me. (laughs) Arcana, that is an 11. On an 11, you don't know exactly what this is. You know what? Nah, I'm going to let it ride. I don't know what we're going to get into later. (laughs) We still have a debate to go to. It is a pouch of some sort of sand, Mm. and you could tell that it's probably magical in nature. Mm Mm-hmm. The last thing I got that I think an archer like yourself would be looking for. It's saying you can rub it on your bow and it does some special shit. I don't really know how it exactly works. 50 gold and it's yours. 50 gold for that armor, by the way. We're not forgetting about that either. Well, how am I to refuse such an offer? I will take this and I will let you know. I may be able to... And I take out the first piece of Wraithosite that we found, the one that's hand size that I've been keeping on me. I put that down. If you are to inform me what you could do with this, I would be very grateful. Flint looks at it and he holds it up. Now this is not something I have ever seen. I can't get you an answer right away, pal, but if you're willing to part with this thing and let me smash it up, I can figure it out. Come back in a couple days. Can I roll insight when he says he doesn't know what it is? Yeah, of course. That's a 15. He's telling the truth from what you can tell. I think we have come to an agreement. I take the armor and the pouch. I pay him 100 gold and I leave him the one piece of Wraithosite. All right. Now, as I'm leaving, I bundle my cloak and get ready to go back outside. You wouldn't happen to know where I could find a good alchemist anywhere. Alchemist? Uh, Oh, can't solve the problem with magic. You're gonna dip those arrowheads in some poison? I sort of shrug. (laughs) Yeah, Spitz McGivens is your person. These are great. (laughs) I hope someone's writing them down because I didn't write those two down. And let me write those down somewhere. Flint McRocky and Spitz McGibbons? How could I forget them? (laughs) Oh my god. Do all, like, hobgoblins have a Mick last name? I don't think that's canon. We're just playing fast and loose over here. The dwarf, the first NPC we met up in here, had a Mick name, too. McTavish. Mitch McTavish. Oh my god, that's Mitch right. Mitch McTavish. <laughs> it's just an Icewind Dale thing. <laughs> yeah, it's just a North, a North Rim thing. <laughs> okay. Are you going into the Alchemist now? Yes. You do find your way there. It's across the street. Nice. Of course. Howdy, Spitz says, as you open the door and a little bell jingles. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to procure any poisons. Uh-huh. Okay. What are you looking for? I got a couple, probably. Something to go on the point of a piercing weapon, let us say. Uh, hypothetically. Okay, well, what's your budget? Because I produce quality, uh, brews? Is that what you all people call it now? My poisons are good, buddy, and they don't cost cheap. What's your budget? Is that so? I am (laughs) sure they are quite strong. I put down 150 gold. All right. 150, okay. I got, uh, let's see, Assassin's Blood we can do you with. We can do some Black Adder Venom. That's not a problem. I don't think you want that one. That one's trash. That's a little too expensive. Amlock, I way out of your league. Erwerg, maybe that's useful. I am curious. I couldn't help but notice you. Name so many. I'm not from around here, but... For a honest business person such as yourself. Very honest. All those prices I said are real. To be dealing in such deadly and powerful alchemical devices, it begs the question, do the local officials know that you are dealing in such, how would you say, off-the-shelf items? Look, they put a ban on magic, but no one in Ice Sale is going to stop someone else from killing someone else, you know what I mean? <sighs> yes, I do know what you mean. So, who are you trying to kill and how are you trying to kill him? I'll set you up with the right poison. This guy fucks. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a name like Spitz and not be willing to spit some foul tr- I don't know what the fuck I was going to say. That was a bad joke. It was just bad. We're going to abandon it. I see you are a person of direct... I take out my bow. This longbow has served me very well. But there will come a time, I think, when I must be able to drop my prey in one shot. Do you understand this? Okay, okay. One shot. Hmm. We'll keep it simple. That 150, I'll give you a little vial of black adder poison. How's that work? You may not see them fall, but they'll fall eventually. Can I make a medicine arcana to see if I... Know exactly what that's going to do? Yeah, have heard of it. it. 
You can even go animal handling since it's derived from a snake. Okay. Again, not that kind of ranger, but because it is wisdom, that is actually going to be the best I can do. That's a 19. Yeah, okay. On a 19, you definitely heard of it. It's a more common poison, especially given that it's cheaper, Mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. If it were to be in like a tabletop game, you think mechanically it would probably be something along the lines of there would be a con save involved and you would do 1d6 poison damage over 2d6 rounds of combat. So it's a pretty long sustaining poison. Don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) It's a 19. They got to reward the 19. Thank you. I will take this. You broke now? Nope. Oh, yeah, no, you're not quite broke yet. Honestly, just to sort of wrap this up, I would spend the rest of the money on hunting traps or better rope, if I can find any of that just around. Yeah, that stuff is not as spicy and fun. We do not even need to RP it. You just spend the money on that shit. And I think we're not going to meet um, Tri- McTrappy and... Uh, <laughs> the bear trap merchant. T- For, t- no, it's t- just Mc- <laughs> Trip McTrappy. <laughs> Tug McTie up. What are you buying again? Two or three bear traps. Yep. And they're five gold each. Cool. I'll get two of those and at least 50 feet of good rope. All right. You get three traps and 50 feet of rope. That's 16 gold. And patron subscribers will get to have all the dialogue with Trip McTrappy and Trap McTrippy. Tug McTie up is the rope. <laughs> Tug McTie up. Now you're 100% Excuse right. Excuse me. Tug McTie up and Trip McTrappy. Again, that's uh, Pods of the Multiverse. Patreon. Become a patron. It's our first in-episode plug. We did three seasons. (laughs) Other than that, Everett's not going to avoid Jibberwink, but Everett's going to stick to the back alleys, wander around town, and hear what he can hear, and see if he can glean any sort of familiar sights or vibes about some of the visions. I got you on that, don't you worry. So you're just heading to the debate area generally, moseying your way there in a roundabout way? Sort of milling around, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's go to Jib and Wink. I know they were having some dialogue that we had to interrupt to meet some really colorful sales folk. You know, they say Tug McTie-Up works in this town. Get <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get all the way the fuck out of here. Is that one of your rope pulling buddies? <laughs> he weaves the finest rope in all of the North. I really ought to pay him a visit. You know, I don't have any rope myself, so maybe I'll come with you. We don't actually have to do this. (laughs) Again, patron subscribers will uh, get all of that content and more. (laughs) Good. I don't really have anything I want to buy right now. And I don't know, not looking to get drunk in the middle of the day. Yeah. I wonder if that, why can't I find their name? The elf who worked for Roman. You never asked for it, which was very, very polite of you. Okay. I never asked their name. I wonder if they're still hanging out at the loose knot. Worth looking. Why, you got something to say to them? Well, I got something to ask them, I suppose. Okay. Maybe it's best you don't know about this. Plausible deniability and all. I was just thinking the same thing. In fact, I'm starting to wonder, if you're going to jeopardize this job for us, well, what's my role in all that? That's for you to decide, I suppose. I'm not sure I'm looking to jeopardize what you're trying to do at the moment. I'm just looking for what I want to be doing after this job is over. Take that in whatever way you will. Well, I hear that. Let me know if you hear anything. I think I might be looking for new employment after not too long myself. Let's talk after the debate, eh? Just friends talking. I'll see you there. And I head off to the Loose Knot to see if I can find this elf. Okay, so you head to the Loose Knot. Make me a perception check. 15. On a 15, you see that really nice barkeep that struck up a great conversation with Jib, but you don't spot that elf anywhere whose name you... Don't remember really getting. Morning, Jory. That feller that was in here yesterday, he stop in here today? Oh, no, not today. No. What would the debate and all, I'd imagine. He doesn't keep a secret. He uh, works with Roman, so I'd be guessing he'd be over there waiting for the big event, you know? Starting pretty soon. That does follow. Where's the uh, rope buddy of yours? (laughs) Oh, he's off to see uh, Tug McTire. Apparently he's a big big name in the rope game. Oh, God. Ugh. Don't get me started on Tug McTie-Up. I don't even like serving that one around here. Big for his britches, that one. <laughs> well, I hope your friend has the good sense to not spend too much time talking to him because Tug can really get his pants all caught up, uh, you know. I don't know what to say about Tug anymore. It's just, whatever. Anyway, hope your friend comes back. I see it's a sensitive subject it for is. you, and I'll, I'll yeah. try no more upon it. <laughs> I do appreciate that. One more unrelated question, though. There a fella named Tash around? Fella named Tash. You referring to 
Union Tash. Yeah, Tash, what heads up you, Bow? Oh, she loves to be referred to as she, but she hasn't been here in a minute. No, I think she's a little busy. Oh, sorry, I was using fella as a gender-neutral term. That oh. might be a regional thing. Nice. Oh, I think it is, buddy. <laughs> oh, not to worry, not to worry. I won't offend her, so. Yeah, she worked real hard to get that spot. Anyway, Tash, here? Not lately. I think she's been working real close with Roman lately, what with everything kind of falling apart. Things getting sunk with the unions and all that. I think she's trying to find a buddy in that guy. So you reckon she'll be at the debate as well? There's a good chance she'd be there, yeah. I would imagine. I mean, it's tough for her, you know? I mean, she heads up the union. She's got to try and stay neutral, but... (laughs) My God, this whole election, it's one of those ones, you know? How do you stay neutral? One's clearly got this opinion. One's clearly got that opinion. Anyway, hey, you want a drink? Well, I appreciate the offer, but no thank you. Not to pry, we don't have any of these elections down where I'm from. What's your take on this whole thing? Do you have a horse in this race? Look, you're from out of town, so I guess I'll be a little bit more plain with you, but running an establishment like this one, it's tough. Your patrons, they become your friends, and they all have their opinions, and it's really hard to form your own, you know? You can't just have one and talk about it. I've got an opinion, but... You don't want getting around that Jory Palumbo's thrown in with one soul or another. Oh, it's just not good for business, you know? And I wish I were a better person, but that's just the way it is. Well, you can always be a better person. For that tip, buddy, next time you come in here, one round free, huh? (laughs) I don't think I deserve that, but I'll take the charity. Thank you kindly, and I head out. Yeah, you uh, walk out. You kind of hear Jory mumble about Tug Mc... Whatever the fuck. <laughs> and, uh. Tug Mc yeah. Tie Up. Come on, Tug this is your Mc. NPC that right, you made it. up. You actually made this one, but. Yes, I know. <laughs> Tug Mc Tie Up Rope Salesperson. Okay. They're really, really, really big in the BDSM community. Oh. <laughs> If Icewind Dale had a Reddit, they would be the subreddit mod. Not even a question. Anything else anyone wants to do? Otherwise, I presume that eventually all roads point to debate and you all converge outside of it. But anything else anyone wants to do? Jib? All right. Thanks, Tug. It was a pleasure meeting you. Again, subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> for that. I'm not going to commit to a voice for Tug until we've got the patron interest. It's not going to happen. Great. We, we need demand. I did buy a little bit more rope there. Again, not not committing to Tug's voice, so you just buy what you want, and we will hand wave over that. I get it, yeah. What's your name? God damn it. Everett, do you have a... <laughs> name, yeah. Do you have a current stealth check? Going? Do I? Yeah, just as you're skulking around town. I would, actually. <laughs> Let's see here. Current stealth check of... 16. Okay. I actually rolled a 17 before I asked that okay. question. So would I see Everett just around town? <laughs> Lurking in the shadows? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say like on your way to the general debate area. All right. So Andy, I think I'm surprised. Like you kind of, you kind of startle me. Where are you right now? I would probably be sitting on the top of a low rooftop. <laughs> I round a corner and just see your legs hanging there. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Everett? Ah, Jib. W- what are you doing up there? I am surveying our engagement. Any good views? Should I climb up? Wait there, I'm coming up. Very well. Yeah, I'll roll perception. Yeah, you can roll perception. That is going to be an 18. Awesome. On an 18 northeast of where you are, you see a town square. It may not be the only one in Bryn Shander. It's a large enough city. But you do see this town square, and it's been hollowed out for the purpose of the debate. You're seeing devices and structures that you've never seen before. It's what we would know as microphones, like a stage, electronic in nature. It'll be assembled from a lot of the materials in Icewind Dale, but there will be a lot of like industrial adornments to those things, and you'll see a lot of contraptions that you're not super familiar with. A crowd is starting to form. The debate seems to be starting soon. You can see people near these devices checking to make sure that they work. Things are starting to get set up for this event. So you can see that clearly in the background. About how far away, Jeppy, would you say the two of us are on this completely arbitrary rooftop? On this very plot-relevant rooftop, you are probably 10 blocks, maybe 15 blocks. It's not like more than a 15, 20-minute walk to the debate area. What's a block? 10 yards? In Icewind Dale? I don't know. They're relatively tight blocks. If you just threw out a random number how far away in feet do you think we are more or less than 300 a little more than 300 probably 450 to 550 or great perfect start shooting people from here with your long bow you (laughs) i didn't say that assassin i didn't say that (laughs) oh 
Wink's got all in my head now. I feel weird about this job tonight. I too have been considering their words. Hmm. I mean, Fail seemed pretty sure that Tragen was going to win anyway. Wonder if we're not really needed here. Yes, they did seem to imply this. One would wonder what would happen. I take out my spyglass and get a better look at some of the lighting fixtures or some of the staging equipment. If there were some sort of malfunction of all of this artificery. I think the word's just artifice. (laughs) Common is clearly not his first language. Give him a break. (laughs) I may not remember much about my past, but I was a Genasi once. Common is not my what are you now? I am reborn. I do not know why. Sorry if that's a rude question. It is quite all right. Jib, I do not know why, but you are very easy to talk to. Oh, thanks. The company I was surrounded by on the Black Road, they did not like to talk. They were people of business, of drive and ambition. Some of them hired me to do things that I did without even a thought, simply for the sake of getting from one place to another. I'm starting to know what that feels like. Yes, but now that we are here, I see you too at night staring out of the windows. This is a very cold and harsh place. It makes contemplation have a different meaning. When you're surrounded by such hostility. That's for sure. It's cold where I'm from, but nothing like this. This is desolate. Almost the total absence of life. Almost. Well, this has gotten gloomy enough. So, you were saying about the lights. Sounded like you had a plan, Bruin. It would just be such an easy thing to do. Our instructions were to, as you have said, get involved. But, they were not specific as to how or why or on whose behalf, even. And... Well, as I said, it would be so very easy for something to go wrong, and, well, a crowd of people in such a desolate place, one can only imagine how easily they may be swayed by such a simple accident. I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. An accident. Are you, uh, suggesting violence here? I have not said this. I know, but I'm asking. I am a very good shot, but I do not think this is... In the realm of possibility for, as I have said, a simple accident. You know, if anyone needs to have an accident, it ought to be. Jib looks around. Fail barrage. But don't tell anyone you heard that from me. (laughs) I have already done so much talking today, I could not imagine uttering another word to anyone else. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I wonder what Wink is up to. Oh, Wink was just headed down to the debate, get there early, see if they can't talk to Roman, Roman's assistant, or Tosh. Pronounce Tash, just so you know. Okay. Is that not what I said? Did I say Tosh? You said Tosh, like Tosh.0. Oh. Tash. <laughs> Tash, okay. yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if my A was a little too open no, there. Good. There's a fucking 2000s throwback. No, I got you. I got you. Yeah, it's a newer character name, so I wanted to make sure you all knew how to pronounce it. Would we see Wink from up here? I was going to say, you all actually might just see Wink moseying down to the debate stage. Isn't that Wink down there? Who's that they're talking to? I train my spyglass in their direction. Yeah, Wink, you head up to the outskirts of the debate. You're kind of just hanging out in the crowd. You see it's starting to busy up. You can roll me a perception check to see anything else. Sure. Only an 11. Cool. On an 11, you see close to the stage two people who might be Trigan and Roman. They have people around them talking to them, like pressed. Though you don't know what Tash looks like, you don't see any woman in that area that isn't one of the people surrounding these two candidates so you don't know if you see tash or not but you do see a familiar looking elf off the stage towards the front of the crowd pouring over some notes okay you said there were press around what sort of publications are there in rin shander have i passed by any newspapers on stoops or anything you'll have seen throughout town posters for the election with hot takes of what's new maybe claims that people have made it's probably not like newspaper like we're used to but after this is done, you'll probably start to see new clippings and posters around town that will have snapshots of what important came of this event. Okay. Bulletin boards. Bulletin boards is a great way to describe it, yeah. Right. So, uh, I guess I will figure out the specifics of the various Brinshander bulletins another time. (laughs) I go talk to the elf. Or I go approach the elf. Oh, you decided to join us. I done told you I would. 
And I'm generally a soul of my word. People tend to get lazy with the political process, so I appreciate you, friend. Well, uh... I don't know if I'd call what you're doing here a political process, but I think it might benefit us to have a bit of a private chat. By all means. I'll do the best I can, but follow me. He starts to walk up the stage. He has access to the stage area and takes you off to the side opposite where who you believe to be the candidates are with the crowd of people. There's no like secluded room for you to go into, but it's an area free of people. This is as good I can do. What would you like to discuss? I'd like to discuss an actual political process. Let me ask you something. Who administrates the law around here? The speaker says something, and who makes sure that what the speaker says goes? We got a sheriff, something like that? We call them marshals here. Marshals. Grinchander has a good number compared to most towns. Most towns have one, maybe two. One? We have six. One or six? Six marshals. Six marshals. Oh, man, you guys are fucked. You're not from around here, to be clear. The marshals oversee a platoon. This is not six people for the whole city. Forgive me. Seemed like, you know, most of these ten towns I've been to, pretty small. I understand how it works. You only have a few people to make sure what the Lord says goes. Who's most prominent among these marshals? That would be Markham Southwell. Do you know where Markham's loyalties lie? I will say, fortunately, if us underdogs take this election, Markham is an individual of principle. Best Roman, and I can tell. His loyalties lie with government. Best you can tell. All right. How many people do you think Markham and all them marshals could muster on short notice? I would say between all six marshals, we have a force of 250. 250. All right. Well, then I'm going to reiterate what I said before. You guys are fucked. And why would this be? Listen, I might be new around here, but I've got my share of experience in, shall we call them, regional power struggles. And (laughs) I got a strong inclination that if Fail Barash can't get what he wants through this election, he's not going to stop, right? I don't anticipate the Vetus Company has been brought up here just to investigate some deaths is all I'm telling you. This is the largest, if I understand correctly, security firm in Faerun, or at least along the Sword Coast. It's here to protect Fail Barash's investments in one form or the other. You understand what I'm saying? I could not understand more. Let me ask you a question, friend. Did you come here to work for Vitas? I did, back when... And yet, you talk to me against their interests. Back when I... You are proof, my friend. Proof that the people's interests will sway them in the direction that we need. The people will win, and we represent those people. <sighs> I don't think you understand. I'm sorry, I don't even know your god's damn name. Friend, I thought you'd never ask. It is Simon. Simon. Simon Greenhaven. Simon Greenhaven. And for those who care, it is spelled S-C-I-M-E-N. What? Simon. Why not? Fuck it. It's a fantasy world. Names are spelled weird. <laughs> But Greenhaven, that's spelled exactly how you expect. Yeah, totally above board. You just throw a little C in there, change the O to an E, and it's fantasy. There's rules. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, listen, Simon. Whether or not the people win the election is immaterial. The people need to be prepared to win the conflict that is going to precipitate from the results of that election. Do you understand? I do. See, from the way I'm talking to you, you don't seem like a person who's prepared to go to war. The war is not my background. My background is much more in the occult. There are forces at play here that are larger than Felborosh. Larger, I believe, than Vitas. We all are beholden. Point up to the sky to Oral. Whoa! <laughs> we got plot. I don't know about any of that. I would love the opportunity to tell you more about that. The debate is starting soon. My friend, I encourage you to listen to the words of Roman. Simon. And meet with me after. Simon, I- what I can tell about you is that you care about people. And you've seen terrible things happen from powerful people. I am not blind to the fact that that is our predicament. I think we can help each other. But I think there are things you do not know about in Icewind Dale. And I think the more you know, the more you can help. Will you come see me after the bit? Well, uh, I will. And I I reckon you're right. My kid Yama used to say, no one is half the battle, and the other half is extreme violence. Let us hope it does not come to that. But I will tell you a story or two about Oral, but violence may in fact be on the horizon. I would hope it does come to that, my friend, because if it doesn't, it means you've lost. Take it easy. And I walk back into the crowd. Awesome. At this time, the debate is starting to fire up. Jib, Everett, not sure if you're going to start making your way. Yeah, I'm going to hop down off this roof and start making my way. Jib, I will keep an eye on both of you. But I feel my skill set would be best used from above. I will make my way here. 
and Everett's gonna... You gonna scale some fucking rooftops and do this shit? See if I can stay rooftop as far in as I can get. Just stay hidden. That's a pretty big weapon you're carrying around on rooftops. This is my intention. To start with, give me an acrobatics check just to navigate the rooftops, and then we'll handle stealth as it comes up. That's the way you want to approach this debate, by rooftop. You got it. The way I love to watch all my debates... From the rooftops. Best seats. Does anyone love to watch debates? No. <laughs> never. Never uh, I got an 18 acrobatics. <laughs> All right, cool, yeah. You bit, bop, hop, and jump, and skip, and fucking frolic yeah. your way over. You find a great view from the book depository. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Cool. All right. Awesome. Jib is going to try to blend into the crowd. I'm going to pull my ear flaps Beautiful. down. I'm going to button up my coat and just kind of look like I belong. I guess I do kind of belong here in a way. I hope so. You don't need to do a check to do that. You do that pretty easily. So Okay. You're in the crowd. Wink, you're also hanging out in the crowd. I'll say that the two of you now see everything that Everett saw from the rooftops, the devices and everything. So around the stage area and also around the audience, you see something that would look similar to stage lights. You see a sound system. You see something similar to a teleprompter. You see a backdrop. <laughs> and you see, as with any good debate, a cage full of doves. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, no, all those things are there. The way this will work is I will do some dialogue and then mechanically the three of you separately can choose one of those things or something else to try and manipulate to turn the favor of the debate towards one candidate or another. These are all the toggleable interactions. Yeah, this is your bip it, bop it, twist it, shock it, whatever of this debate. You are allowed to do that. You can also explain to me what you want to do and we can just figure out what the rolling would be. But basically, those things that you see around you, you surmise you could manipulate or screw with in some way to either screw with Tragen's performance or Roman's performance, or you could also just absolve yourself from it and just watch. I'm sorry, there's a teleprompter? That would be for the moderator, (laughs) yes. But you could screw with it to like... I'm sorry, so are there computers now? In this fantasy world? So this would probably be something like message, bastardized and augmented through some sort of gadgetry, basically. Okay. So it is magic? in some way, some part of it. All of these things have some magical elements to it, but they're augmented by (laughs) what, Andy? But ever here can't get some arrows. Yeah, that's all. (laughs) Only teleprompters. I mean, as players, do you want to roll insight on that? There's a reason. As players? Yeah. What's my insight modifier? I don't know. I will say, (laughs) is it really that weird that the powers that be have access to magic, but regular people can't buy it? But this is a public event, no? Yeah, which is made to bolster an election event. Mm. (laughs) An election event. An election-like occurrence. God damn it. Can I just say fucking words? <laughs> Insight. <laughs> it's all meaning to insinuate that the usage of magic is being regulated by a specific group of people. It's not all gone, but there is a concerted effort to make sure there is less and less of it available. Okay, cool. Got it. Thank you for the clarification, because that was throwing me a bit. Picking up older pieces, just want to clarify. Icewind Dale used to be a place where a lot of people used magic. Is that what you said earlier? Yeah. And now it's just dried up. It's fading, for sure. And normal people don't really know why that is. Yeah. Everyone's going to have some theories about it right now. Got it. Now tell us about the sound system. Please don't make me do it. I'm just... (laughs) Please allow me some hand waving, for God's sake, (laughs) to build this world. (laughs) So Magic Mouth is a spell. (laughs) There we go. Good. All right. So the crowd comes into place. You all take note of everything around you. So you finally get a good glimpse of the candidates. On the left side, you'll see who you believe to be Tragen. This person is a human, presents male, has longer, maybe just below the ears, wavy brown hair, clean shaven, looks to be around close to middle age, you'd presume early 40s, maybe mid 40s. And on the right side of the stage, you see a half elf, seems to be much younger, has an optimistic look in their face, blonde haired, large doughy blue eyes. This is Roman. The moderator has like slimy car salesman vibe. It's a human, unremarkable human man. Looks annoying. (laughs) I'm your moderator, unremarkable human man. (laughs) Yeah, that is the NPC name. Unremarkable human man. You all settle in. The event has started. The moderator introduces themselves, introduces Tragen, introduces Roman. You take stock of what all these three look like. They're going to begin the first round of dialogue here. Is there anything anyone wants to do to any of the equipment or surroundings before that kicks off? As this is getting started, I want to just get a general vibe check of the audience. Just go around to different people, be like, who y'all here supporting? What's your position on this hullabaloo? From the people you survey, 
Some of them are a little gruff and hand wave you away and just point towards Tragen's side of the sage. A lot of people just, they'll say things that are pro-union, but also pro fail barrage. And then also just general vibe of the audience. A lot of people seem to be looking to the left side of the stage, Tragen's side of the stage, with a celebrity reverence. You can tell Tragen is more the household name when the two candidates are on stage. Okay. I'm going to remember what Everett was getting at and take a look at these lights and see if someone were to start messing with them, what kind of role might their DM ask? <laughs> these lighting rigs are actually not above the stage. They're lighting the stage from another perch off to the left. But you can see them from here. You know that you'd probably have to climb your way up to them. And you would need to physically manipulate these stage lights. They seem pretty heavy. You would guess that it would require some level of strength in some way to move those lights around. And there's no one up there with them right now? Nope, not that you can see. I note that. All right, and the moderator begins. Let's start things off right. Trigon, it's no secret that you have worked closely with Fail Barash in the past. How has that relationship driven your ideals around breaking up the unions? You've said in the past you support what the company is doing. Well, look, I've said it before and I will say it again. And I know it sounds cold, but this isn't politics. It's math. Math doesn't lie. Math doesn't wait for a sacrifice. And it doesn't care about the cold or your feelings. I may have been young at a time, but the numbers tell the only story that matters. Before the Union, we had more resources. We've got towns supplementing their sacrifices to oral. They used to use warmth. Now they're sacrificing people. I've never heard of such a thing. Look, you take emotion out of it and yeah, it's a tough pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, we need to get rid of these unions. And plainly, I support what Vail Barash is doing for the good of the ten towns. You hear a good amount of chatter from the people in agreement, but it's mild. It's still anti-union, but it is pro-resource. So you get a level set amount of applause and agreement from the crowd. Moderator, smiling, nodding his head. Okay, Roman, your response. Listen, it's easy for both of us to sit here and pretend about what's best for the ten towns and act like all the solutions sit with the union. But it's not that simple. Oral doesn't care about unions. She doesn't. But she does require sacrifice. You're right. And while my opponent here can talk all he wants about life before the unions, the reality is we do have resource scarcity. But rather than focus on that, we're focusing on how we can protect Fail Barash's bottom line? That's absolutely ridiculous. How can we expect to produce what we need to survive, and dare I say thrive, when we can't even guarantee to send our people home safely after a work shift? People are dying left and right in the workplace, now that the union is gone. If this keeps up, frankly, it won't matter whether we have suitable sacrifice for Earl because we'll all be dead while Fail Barash himself stuffs his coffers. You see about the same level of engagement and applause from the crowd. At this point, now that you've heard a little bit from both, anything you want to do? Scanning the crowd from my position, do I see either Fel Barash himself or Garen Kang there? You do not notice Garen Kang, and you do not notice Fel Barash. Uh, wandering through the crowd, do we notice other people who seem to be from Vetus? Do I notice <laughs> uh, Kessa? You don't see Kessa in the crowd walking around, but you do see people that work for Vetus, like hired grunts from Vetus. Some of the people that were milling about in the makeshift barracks. They're just there to watch. They're not there looking like they're armed, ready to do something. They're hanging back and observing the outcome of this. Okay. Is Barrage Boy there? Barrage Boy, presumably. Him and the old bears are running around between some of the ten they're towns. They're halfway to water you don't deep know by now. <laughs> okay. They gone. Is Isaac here? You do not see Isaac here, no. No, you do not. How high up am I right now? 20 feet. You're not that high up. Okay, so like a... It's like a two-story two, building. Two-story building, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm going to stay on the rooftop. But I am going to look for a very good hiding place to drop a rope if I were to climb down and then climb back up later. You can do that. You don't need to roll anything. Did I hear a rope drop somewhere? Oh, right. Jim's fucking rope sense. <laughs> <laughs> Homebrew feet, rope sense. Exactly. Rope sense. I can sense rope anywhere within 120 feet. If I get close enough to this teleprompter, can I see what the next question is going to be? Yeah, you can. Roll perception. People are milling about, so you may have to read a few words between people. Oh, that's good. 16. You see Roman and you see oral. So you presume the next question is going to be lobbed at Roman about oral. That's good, because I don't really know what any of this oral business is about right now. I'd like to hear more about this. I'm not going to do anything else. I think Wink is going to go through the crowd and introduce some skepticism about Tragen's argument. Try to do it where the Vetus grunts can't really tell that it's me. I may be from out of town, but it doesn't seem logical to say that the union affects one way or another what's going to oral and what isn't. That doesn't add up to me. 
This guy is talking like he's got facts and logic, but this don't square right for me. Stuff like that. And Wink believes that, right? Yeah, cool. like it doesn't make sense to Wink how the union would affect what sort of resources are available. Throw some persuasion my way, and then if you could follow it up with a stealth, too. I shall. Ew, gross. The persuasion is only a 13. Roll the 5. Okay. The stealth... Much better, a 22. The lingering Vetus employees, we'll say, they don't notice. And on that 13, you're able to get a couple thoughtful people looking up in the air like, hmm. Yeah. You get a little bit of that on that. Cool. Excellent. The moderator resumes. Okay. Okay. Well, then let's stay with you here, Roman. You mentioned oral quite a bit. I think it's safe to say we're all very keen on learning more about that one, right? Oral coming in, eating sacrifices. What's your plan for keeping those sacrifices plenty and keeping all of us safe? Well, to start, I'd cut all this nonsense with getting rid of magic. You ask me, that's been another company ploy to get people invested in the new products that they're trying to sell. I mean, hell, look at all of this. You see Roman gestures at the microphone, the lighting rig up there, forward at this teleprompter, making a show of how silly he thinks all that is. This lighting is being provided by some new fail barrage contraption, I can guarantee you that. And what's worse is, these things require resources. You can bet a hell of a lot more than any magic components would require. You think this is all really us being efficient? I don't think so. Tragen starts to cut him off. Now, wait a minute. Much more going on than just some company ploy and you know it. Okay, Tragen, I'll give you a chance to respond after. Wait your turn. There's no reason. The new and the wondrous can't coexist, Tragen. If you weren't deeply in Failbarash's pockets, you'd see that too. But even without these devices and gadgets, it's simple. The talk of the Ten Towns has always been about these companies breaking apart and the union falling apart. But none of us have sat, thought, and talked about the other route we can take, consolidating. On my first week as speaker, I would take each of these sold-off pieces of fail barrage and purchase them, deem them a public utility. I'll tell you what, these conversations are already underway. We've been talking with about 70% of these business owners now that they've bought from fail barrage. There's interest. The union would remain in place, working as an independent entity to provide protection and safeguards against this government-run company. Everyone would be a government worker, well-paid, union-protected. All resources would be non-profit, expected to break even on production costs, with everything else going to oral until we stabilize and remove all human and warmth sacrifices. At this, you hear a pretty good roar from the crowd. People seem to like this idea. I want to scope out some people who seem to like that last thing. He said, make my way over to them. Who are these people? Who are they? Yeah. Like, what do they look like? What's their whole deal? You can spot a couple of them that look like workers. You can even spot mothers, family unit people, people dressed in plain clothes, younger, late teenagers. Those were kind of the people that were rallying here. Okay. I'm going to go over to them. Well, he has a lot of good ideas, doesn't he? I say to no one in particular, just kind of into that group of people. One of the plain clothes people, a woman is like, I'd say so. It's been hard lately. We never know when Oral's wrath will hit us again. And while my husband does work for a logging company and I worry about his safety, if I'm honest, I worry more about Oral. And then I worry about if we're going to be sacrificed. Roman makes some good points. I agree. I just don't know if he can do it. Yeah, that is the trouble, isn't it? Say, I'm new in town. Who decides who gets sacrificed? Well, all the towns are different and we've never had to do that here in Bryn Shander. But the rumor mill... A lot of other towns have been doing it. The towns that didn't normally used to do it. I don't know if they set up a group of people and they do a vote. I don't know if it's the militia or if it's the speaker. I don't want to find out. It's done by force then. Maybe. You'd have to force me to do it. And she clutches her child a little bit closer. Me as well. And your husband, if you'll forgive me the line of questioning, is he in a union? They haven't been able to break up the union here in Bryn Shander yet. It being one of the big ones, you know. He's still safe. Well, we're thankful for that. Oh. All right, well, best of luck to you. Thanks. I appreciate it. She looks back and claps a little bit louder after Roman has that line. Maybe she came in with doubts about how he'd do it. She's starting to forget about those details and just wants to find some comfort in a candidate that might solve some problems that she has. Anybody else got anything this round? Everett is waiting for a particular statement from either side, but hearing Roman talk more and more about Oral definitely has his interest peaked. Wink isn't sure how they feel about all this. Sort of of the opinion that a gentler lord is still a lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And lukewarm on the idea of the speaker taking the place of Fel Barash. So they think that to themselves and remain silent. Okay. All right. Moderator continues. Trey, please respond to this. Look, the dampening of magic... Sorry, misspoke there. 
The work Fail Barash has done, which I support, has been designed to supplement magic. Not only did I spend years working at Fail Barash, I also spent time on exhibitions, including time at Solstice Isle, the domain of Oral herself. Look, I keep no secrets here. Oral is pure evil. I've seen her. I've survived her. She thrives on magic. The less of it we use, the better. We cannot rely on it any longer. We can sit here and focus all day on how this impacts Fail Barash, but I choose to look at the bigger picture, Roman. I look at towns with people who don't know if they'll be next on the altar of sacrifice because the town ran out of lumber. I'm seeing children torn from their mothers. I see townspeople having to choose between eating for three days or leaving fish for oral in the night. Sure, I support what Fail Barash is doing, but more than that, I support the people of Icewind Dale. I support the ten towns. The crowd goes nuts for this. Everett wants to do something here. Yeah. Wink might do something during that speech, but Everett, go ahead first. If you're going to do something during, I was going to do something right at the end, so go for it. Okay. The sound system. Mm -hmm. Can I get a look at that and how that's set up? Yeah, you can go up to that sound system, no problem. Yeah. To avoid any suspicion, not even just from Vetus, but anyone that's facilitating this event, I will have you roll stealth to get really close to it. Sure. That is a 21 stealth. Okay, yeah. You're inside the sound system if you want to be. Great. Hmm. Lovely. I do that. You shouldn't. You should stay outside of it. Anyway, you see some cable leading from this box towards the stage. Though you are not a sound engineer, Wink, those days are not only not behind you, they never existed, you'd be able to tell that these cables, you could probably jostle them around or tug at them, and you might be able to cut out the sound temporarily throughout that. I would have you... If you want to do that, roll sleight of hand to try and jostle around this device a little bit. Okay, yeah. I want to time that specifically when Tragen is talking about how this stuff that Fail Barash has made is like meant to augment magic. Okay. I want it to go on the fritz at the points where he's praising it, basically. Yeah, all right. Let's do it. Fifteen. Cool. You succeed for sure. Has been designed to suck magic. And what's more is that I think I said the crowd goes nuts. They would have, but you did alter the oomph and the gravitas of Tragen's message there, and the crowd was still very positive, but not quite as uproarious at the end of that as a result. Okay. Now I don't know if I want to do my thing, because that was pretty good. Having heard something going on with this sound system, I looked in that direction and rolled a four perception and didn't see that it was Wink doing it. Nobody ever notices the halfling. <laughs> Do I see a discernible reaction from Tragen? You do. I will have you roll insight to understand it a little bit better and see if you can glean what Tragen might be feeling in that moment. Okay. Insight. That is a 19. Cool. On a 19, clearly frustration. He's moving around this microphone, smacking at it. And you can tell from this frustration, you're good at reading people. Tragen has had, so far, this entire election cycle dealt with and managed and handed to him in some way shape or form Mm -hmm. everything's been under control tragen you can tell is frustrated and shocked perhaps this is someone that's used to things going perfectly and it's alarming and upsetting to them that something went wrong i have line of sight on him does he have line of sight on me unless y'all do something crazy you're in the crowd well everett is doing something crazy everett's on a roof roof on the other side of the square oh my god yeah yeah that's a great point they've got lights in their faces yeah also still no yeah Cannot see the balcony. All right. At the end of this round, I'm going to cast Disguise Self as Garen Kang, and I'm going to ready my longbow. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. Okay. You see a shadowy, cold grip of frost around my entire form, and it evaporates in an instant, and I am this figure. All right. You do that. Curious how that'll go. Excellent. Jib's wandering around in the crowd, scratching his head. All right. Final two rounds will be final statements. Moderator will say, Roman, we'll allow you a final statement here. Yeah, I'm happy to. I'll keep it brief. Tragen has previously tried to push policy that disbands the unions. That tells me one simple truth. He can talk all he wants about Oral. The reality is, he's bought and paid for it by Fail Barrage. As long as we keep putting profits before people, we will never be free from Oral's wrath. And we'll never even be free from each other. I yield my time. You see that what Roman probably thought was a powerful statement actually didn't really go over with the crowd at all. Can I make insight on that? Yeah, what would you like to glean? That seemed like the kind of thing they were going crazy for earlier, but now it kind of fell flat. He just didn't deliver it well. Roll your insight. Okay. 
11. On an 11, from what you can tell, people were more surprised at how short of an answer that was. They were probably just expecting more. Yeah. Jib's not insightful. <laughs> but on an 11, you can tell the, the crowd just expected a little more for a final statement of an event. Can I also do this insight? Yeah, anyone's welcome to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Wink got terribly lower. Only a six. Okay. Uh, Everett got a 16. Okay. <laughs> Everett loves to save group insight rolls. I have no way of letting them know, but... Yeah, you don't. Everett, you can tell, even from a distance, just based on the way Roman delivered that and then the way Roman reacted to the crowd, Roman's a novice politician and thought a punchy little impact statement with a mic drop, yield my time, would be cool and well-received, and he just kind of fucked and boofed this one, basically. Wink is going to disguise their voice and do their best Icewind Dale accent. That all you got to say? <laughs> I thought you were standing up for us. I figured you'd be more angry. Give me a moment here. Roman would totally respond to that. That's a performance check, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you a performance check. I'll say it's a low DC. Sure. The crowd isn't responding much, so it's a pretty dull moment. The bard on a performance check. I mean, it's a 27, by yeah. the way. I have everyone fooled that I yeah. was born and I raised mean, here. The only reason we rolled that was to remind people this is a D&D podcast. <laughs> I mean, there was no purpose to that roll other than just, hey, friendly reminder, we roll D20s from time to time. You do that easily and convincingly. I'm furious. I'm absolutely furious. I'm sorry, I don't want to come off like I don't care. I just felt like... We all know it, deep down. Do we even need to say any more words? The more I talk, the more Tregan fires back. I don't want to give Tregan the opportunity to convince anyone else that what we're doing here is the right thing, because it's not. The more we try and put our efforts towards whatever it is Fail Barash wants to do, the less we're focusing on us. I want to stop hearing stories about the town sacrificing people for Oral. I work with a lot of people that know deeply about Oral and what she is capable of. There's so much more to learn, and I want all of us to do that together. And I want all of us to thrive in this place. And I think we can do it. And if you just trust me and believe that we can accomplish this, in spite of all the things working against us, that we'll have a future where everyone works, everyone goes home, and none of us have to worry about these terrors in the night. I hope you all trust me. And I hope we can take this journey together. That's what I wanted to hear! (laughs) All right, cool. As a result of you doing that, and I'll just give you that because you rolled a high 20s roll, you not only got Roman to do the thing the crowd wanted, but the crowd also responded in the way that Roman initially intended, and that bolstered Roman's performance a little bit. Anything you all want to do now? Would I be very visible if I made my way up to where the lights are? I'm going to have you roll a stealth check. Would it be a very difficult stealth check from the position? No. Okay. In fact, it would actually be easier than the one Scala already passed for the speaker. They're up on a scaffold to the left side of the stage, whereas like the speaker and the teleprompter are more within the crowd. So this is an easier stealth check. Okay, I'm not going to climb up there, but I am going to look up to the sky and find my bird friend. Oh boy. Roll perception. <laughs> it's my familiar. I know it's your familiar. I close my eyes and I can see through its eyes. I don't think I need to. I'm sorry. I didn't know that's what you were doing. That's not what I'm doing, but I don't think I need to roll perception oh. to find it when that is the case. There is an empathic link oh, to okay. a distance yeah. of a long ways. It's like 100 feet. Okay. Just want to get it on the record that my bird is here too. And an albatross circles overhead. Thank you. And it is 100 feet. Yes. You can always have your bird shit on somebody. <laughs> Do Faye familiar shit? <laughs> that question and many more will be answered in this week's Table Talk. <laughs> which is, which, yes, which is accessible if you're a patron. Uh, Jib is pretty torn. I kind of don't want to morally take a side right at this moment. You can do literally nothing. Yeah. Only do what you think your character should do or would do. You saw your familiar. Is there anything else you want to do? No, I just wanted to bring my familiar into this scene. But before this, nothing. All right. Ever- Sorry, Garen? Where are those doves? <laughs> <laughs> they're on the right side, and they're just like on a pedestal, not on the stage. Uh-huh, right. Presumably to be released at the end in a fanfare kind of fashion. All right. There's a lock on there you might be able to hit. I'm going to wait until Tragen starts speaking. Tragen, oh, final words. We will be free of Oral's wrath. All this work we're doing, not just Fail Barash, but us, the people. All of this work is leading to something. We will go to Solstice Isle, and we will destroy Oral once and for all. That's not how it works. You can't just... All right. No counters on final statements. Thank you, everyone, for attending. When he says he's going to defeat Oral, I'm going to cast Zephyr Strike, which gives me advantage on my next attack. And then I'm going to cast Hail of Thorns and attack 
the lights nearest to Tragen. All right. Disguised as Garen Kang, I rolled a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know much about Garen Kang, but hell of an archer, that Garen Kang. And the flavor of my Hail of Thorns is shards of ice. I don't know if you want me to roll damage on this. I would say roll damage on it to see what kind of noise, commotion, distraction it provides. 36 points of damage. Your blow pierces right through this light fixture at such a velocity and with such an impact that the light immediately goes out, causing the distraction. As Tragen is talking, the crowd is still able to hear Roman's interjection and the moderator corrects Roman. And as that happens, the entire fixture actually jostles itself free and falls down the scaffolding, causing a huge commotion. And at that point, the moderator will say, okay, okay, thank you everyone for stay attending. Try and do some damage control to get the focus on the last statement, not on this event, but at this point, the debate is like if it wasn't ending organically it sure as shit is over now no one is hurt for those who are curious and if i can i want tragen to see me you'd have to explain to me how you're gonna do that because you did just cause not only a commotion but a commotion that undermined what he was trying to do that's not that important well i think my work here is done <laughs> All right. Yeah, you'll see the crowd circling around this light fixture. They'll pull out the arrow, and there's going to be commotion all around. After a time, the moderator will pull aside Roman and Tragen. Some people are just starting to leave, like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Party's over. I assume the two of you are hanging out here. Jib, I guess you do have your albatross. Is there anything you want to do with that before we go on to what happens next? Because I do want to afford you the opportunity to use your familiar even though Garen Kang, I mean Everett, definitely just caused a stir. No, that came as a surprise to Jib. Yeah, just gonna see what happens next. You all notice a poor bird's keeper at the cage full of doves looking really bummed out that they didn't get their chance to shine. I want to start scanning the crowd to see if I can find Wink. Easy to spot Wink, despite the halfling stature, because the crowd is dissipating. The general admissions area is starting to become more dissipated and more empty. Wink is actually making their way through the crowd as well, taking another vibe check at the end of the debate. What'd y'all think about that ruckus? That was more excitement than I expected. Stuff like that to try and gauge people's reactions and how they're feeling. The people are in little pockets, so it's a lot of cross chatter, but you'll hear things like totally that was crazy we only ever get doves at the end of these kinds of things stuff like that in terms of sentiment though you can tell that people have a little bit of a mixed opinion but there seems to be a mild bit of belief in roman it's from your vibe check mechanically roman may have actually won this debate by a little tiny bit okay you said the two of them are starting to be collected up. you can see them from the roof or as you're coming down from the roof it's easy to spot i'm still on this idea i want to stay disguised as Kang. I don't care if people see me because I'm disguised, but I just want to position myself far away, but in his eyeline that he is gonna see me across the way. He meaning Tragen. Tragen. Okay, yeah. Tragen and Roman were pulled off stage shortly thereafter by the moderator. Okay. Yeah, so by the time you come down and get to that area, you'll probably have missed Tragen. He would be completely gone. He would be out of sight. He was not gonna be away from the area. Even if it was just I was following him really far behind, I just really want to intimidate him as Kang. That's my goal. I'll just say that. I'll say that right now you cannot do that, but if you want to hang back somewhere in the area as Kang, you might have an opportunity to again when Tragen is leaving. But right now, Tragen's behind the stage. Wink and Jib, as you're there... Was that you up there in the lights? Wink shakes their head. I just thought that was divine intervention. What about the sound? That must have been you. Who am I talking to here? Am I talking to Jib Rope Hauler or Jib Vetus Agent? Well, I, the debate's over. I feel it. I do value your friendship, Wink, and uh, I don't think there's too much conflict of interest us talking now, just as friends, you know. Well, between friends, I might have had something to do with that. So I see you taking a side then, firmly. I don't know what I think about this Roman character, but I know Tragen. I've seen plenty of patsies, and Tragen's one of them. Sure. Roman's ideas do seem pretty lofty, though. Popular? I don't know. I don't know how he'll get it done. Well, he seems like he knows something about this whole oral business, and that feller that was with him, Simon, he seemed like he knew quite a bit about that. Simon? That elf we talked to in the... well, that I talked to in the bar the other night. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, isn't that him right there? Coming this way? Yes, thank you, Jimmy. DM layup. Yeah, you do see Simon approaching you. 
Thank you for staying, friend. And I see you've brought someone else with you here. You look familiar from the bar. What is your name? Well, you can call me Jib. Jib, I am Simon. It is nice to meet you. I say an elven. Pleasure to meet you. He responds in elven, and then switches right back to common. So what did you two think of what you heard? Pretty eventful. Some technical difficulties in there. Do you do this kind of thing often? I would like to pretend that we have experience in these things, but my candidate is young at heart. But this was uncommon. And he looks over at the smashed up light (laughs) off to the side. Uncommon how? To my knowledge, these sort of devices are sturdy. I'm surprised, but eh, something for the people to talk about. Yeah. I think it was some sort of mechanical failure. Candidate mentioned it was fail barrage equipment. (sighs) The political expert in me would say yes, but that would be a lie. They lodged an arrow from the device. This was done by someone. Interference? You don't say. Wink hears about the arrow and then just lets a very broad grin creep across their face. (laughs) (laughs) Say, Simon, I feel like there's stuff that I'm not fully appraised of. And you wanted to talk to us about oral... I feel like my understanding of the situation is limited by my understanding of how Oral is involved. I'd love to discuss with you something on that matter. Please, by all means. Where was your other friend from last night, by the way? I noticed he had a bow and arrow. One wonders if perhaps we have another ally. Jib shrugs. (laughs) Like, I want to be part of this conversation, but Everett is also trying to do the other thing first. You're generally around the area. You're as Garen Kang. You're not even trying to stop. You can hear this conversation. Wait, do we see Garen Kang walking around? I mean, Andy, that's up to you, really, if you want to try and stealth away from them and not be seen by them. I would avoid goons, but I would not try and stealth through this crowd. I sort of want people to whisper that Kang showed up after this shit happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. And then I really want to threaten Tragen. I hear you. So, perception check, what'd y'all get? Wink only got a six. 17. Okay, cool. Yeah, you notice Garen Kang walking around for sure. You notice that Garen Kang is pacing, posting in different spots. Up to you for how you want to feel about that or react, if at all. I would like to try to alert Wink to that situation without Simon noticing. So I'm going to try to nudge Wink in like a, "Mm, look over there kind of way. Okay. I would say stealth for the ability to not let Simon notice. I was feeling sleight of hand. But. Sleight of hand is also cool. Yeah, since it's a nudge, I like it. It's 22. Okay, since you pass that, Wink, you can retry that perception roll. Okay. It's a 14 perception this time. Yeah, you catch a figure that looks a lot like the shape of Garen, so you could probably figure out that Jib wouldn't be nudging you if it were anyone but Garen. Cool. I excuse myself from the conversation a moment. I'll be right back. I just need to take care of a bit of business right quick. I go over to Garen Kang. <laughs> I take out the sending stone, I offer it to him, and I say, Mr. Kang, thank you for the opportunity, but I'm going to be resigning effective tonight. Andy, do you remember what Garen Kang's voice sounds like? (laughs) (laughs) I take it and say nothing. Thank you for being professional about this. And I walk back. (laughs) Love it. Wink put in the two-week notice without even really putting in the two-week notice. I put in a zero-minute notice. You put in immediate, yeah. <laughs> I know. That's like the most and least cool quit job story anyone will ever tell. <laughs> I quit my job in a dramatic fashion to the wrong person without realizing it. <laughs> All right, anyway, we'll just keep that conversation going. The last thing that Simon asked was, Where was your other friend from last night, by the way? I noticed he had a bow and arrow. One wonders if perhaps we have another ally. I gave a big shrug. Yeah, Wink neither confirms nor denies, but does smirk irrepressibly. Interesting. Well, no matter. The matter at hand, Oral. I have seen many things. Before my time in the city, I spent many days, many nights in the wilderness. Oral doesn't just stay in Solstice Isle, where her dwelling is, but she comes and visits the Ten Towns. She will kill people, destroy buildings, create terrible storms that last for days or weeks. She does so without care or meaning. It is chaos. It is wrath for the sake of itself. I saw her once, in the wilds. There was a ritual. It was in the distance, but all I saw were people. And then the terrible sound, the terrible screech. There was a giant orb floating in the air, and then a blizzard, unlike anything I had ever seen in my life. And then everyone there vanished. It was as if... She just removed these people from existence. Her magic grows stronger. Andy, you overhear this, Mm -hmm. and I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Cool. That's a 21. Okay, cool. On a 21, like, your head starts to pound, Mm -hmm. but you're able to steal yourself. But when he mentions the idea of a blizzard unlike anything he had Mm -hmm. seen, 
mm-hmm. and then vanishing, mm-hmm. you feel something stirring within you. You yeah. can't make out what it is, but your head is pounding and your head is starting to hurt. God damn it. <sighs> He's really close to just bailing on this idea. I just want him to notice me so I can make a thumb across the neck gesture. Can I try and see if he's, like, still backstage? I'm going to have you do a stealth check. He exited stage left, which is the same side as where the commotion was from the fucking light fixture you just bopped the shit out of. So I'll have you roll stealth, because I presume you probably don't want to be in that big of a crowd of people, but I could be wrong. Again, as long as there's no one that Everett would think would actually know him, then... I wouldn't care. In that crowd, there might be. Okay. Because that's where all the people that didn't leave the entire town square are right now. Yeah, that's a dirty 20 stealth. You can navigate around them. You can maybe go behind that scaffolding Mm -hmm. that was propping up those lights. Mm -hmm. And you can see through a sliver, Mm -hmm. Roman and Tragen and the moderator and a few other people back there. Mm -hmm. You're able to linger there long enough where Tragen might be able to catch a glimpse of you. You can make that gesture towards Tragen, but it's going to be through like a little slit in the wall. I would even open it a little bit if he was positioned that he was on the other side of the space looking towards this. And that's all I would do. Okay, you do that. I would linger there long enough for him to notice me. And I know what you're trying to do, so I'll ask you to roll intimidation. Thank you. To see if your posture gives the intent. And that is a 19. Tregan may not look scared or nervous per se, but Tregan seems very alarmed by your presence and the way in which you are presenting yourself to him. Great. As soon as I do that, and as soon as I see that reaction, I will disappear. As I'm wading back through the crowd, as stealthily as possible, drop disguise self, and appear next to Jib and Wink. I'm very curious about what you say of this ice witch. I have experienced something of what you say. Please continue your tale. Not much of a tale to tell, I'm afraid, but Oral is jealous, uncaring, relentless. We know where she is, but anyone that steps foot on Solstice Isle, she can see them. It is part of her magic. Tregen has a vendetta against Oral and plans to kill her. He will ensure that we are defenseless, because there is no way we can ever kill Oral. We can only appease her. When she dies, she comes back. There is no end to her. Roman is young, perhaps foolish, but he listens. Not just to me, not to people like me, but to everyone. I believe that Roman will focus on what the people need, while not shying away from the fact that we are beholden to her wrath. Perhaps someday we can aspire to better, but being hell-bent on trying to kill her will leave us all in the cold. I take out some of the wraith sight we took off of Isaac. You know what Oral might want with something like this? He looks curiously at the wraith sight, picks it up. I am familiar with this. It is newer. Wraith sight, they call it. Well, I know why Felbarosh produces it, or we have a theory. Perhaps something I hope you can help us confirm. We'll get to that. Oral would want nothing to do with this. This material, I believe, is used to dampen magic. Just a theory. The idea that Tregan said, Oral thrives on magic, it is hearsay. Nonsense. Getting rid of magic will have no effect on Oral. Will not make her weaker. She could care less. In fact, it just makes us weaker. This, he clutches this stone with a little bit of anger. This is more of the same. More of the reason we should never seek to fight against Oral. Why do you ask? How are they using it, do you know? I don't know for certain, but there does seem to be a great deal of concern around it. And the cult of the Black Sword seemed interested in it as well. Simon's eyes go down to the ground contemplatively for a moment. Interesting. I heard they were running low on Chardelin. This must be the replacement. It makes sense. Sure what now? No way. What? Running low on what? The word he said was Chardelin? Yeah. You can roll religion or arcana. Gladly. All right, I got a 14. I'm going to use knowledge of a past life for a dirty 20. I got a 19 arcana. Anyone else? Six. Well, I don't know nothing about none of that. Okay, Everett, on that roll, really lingering from distant memories you have from a time before, Shardolin sounds very familiar to you. Mm. You know that generally, and Wink, you would know this too from like some folk tales, that that material is used for a lot of recruitment 
people use it to symbolize a common purpose and usually to keep people in a fixated state is how it is used in the north typically. It's like a drug then. Ish. I don't love that terminology for it, but it definitely is going to make people more suggestible and dampen their ability to do anything but like maybe one or two programmed things that they need to do. Yeah, I'm not saying drug in the pejorative sense, but it functions like a mind-altering substance. Beautiful. Love it. I have come across this substance before, but I cannot remember. Simon relays to you what I just said as the DM. That way, Jib, your character now has this knowledge. Then Simon will say, I wonder if this is the substitute. Think it can dampen thinking the same way it dampens magic? Again, the dampening magic is conjecture, as it were. But Simon looks around a little bit. I appreciate the three of you very much. The fact that you are not from around here, and yet listen to me, come to this event, looking at your bow, Everett, and perhaps more, tells me I may have allies in the three of you. I hide it better than it was already hidden as soon as he brings it up. Oh. And what's more is that the three of you, despite working for Vetus, maybe you don't believe everything we believe, but something tells me we see things the same way. If I may, I would love for you to meet Roman. Would you be willing to hear what we have to say? There is something to this, he holds up the stone, and we might need your help. I'll talk with Roman, although the person I was more interested in meeting around here was Tash. Funny you should mention. She's a good friend of ours. I'll see to it that she's there. After following Simon through the city, you find yourself in a relatively small building. Think of it akin to one of those, when you see local elections going on, and one of the candidates has a little two-room, three-room building for their campaign. It's one of those. You go through the building, you see a handful of people readying up posters and what have you, and you go into the back room with Simon, and you sit there for a moment, and not before long, the door opens with Roman and Tash coming in. So in the room is the three of you and Simon, Roman, and Tash. It's probably just a circular table. And what does Tash look like? Is she human? Around what age? Tash is a younger half-elf. She has long brown hair. It's rough and a little bit curly. She wears very plain clothes and you can tell a very chipper demeanor about her as well. So the six of you settle in and Simon says, my new friend, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Roman. These three, I've taken an interest to them. They seem to express similar values, though not the same. I think they may be able to help us. And wink, this is the ever-famous Tash. Tash immediately gives you a bow of her head with a courteous kind of happy face about her. Your reputation precedes you. Thank you, Wink. I appreciate this. It is nice to meet you, though my reputation... Well, I wish it were bigger, because then I could help more people. Well, maybe we can help you with that. Let's hope. Roman and I have quite a bit of work ahead of us, but before we get into all that, I'm sure you have questions. What is it you know about the Union, and what else would you like to know? Well, Jib here's the Union man, and from what he tells me, y'all scrap with the companies when they're getting a bit too... What's the word I'm looking for? Greedy. Greedy. When they make too much imposition on you, when they're not giving you what you're worth, is what Jib said. I think that's a fair way to say it. Really, it's the nature of companies, at least up north. Jib, would you agree? Well, yeah, from time to time. You know, things get a little hairy. Oh, it's all the time up here. It keeps me busy. But it has created a hunger in our people. A hunger that I think Roman can speak to. If only we can get our message across. Are you saying these sort of conflicts happen frequently between companies and their workers? Before you bow, sure. But I would argue that it rarely came to conflict. The companies just did what they want. The workers usually fell in line. But now with you, bow, There's a little more muscle. I'd argue not enough. A company like Phil Barosh, it never feels like there's enough. Yeah, perhaps that's me being emotional. What with them getting rid of us. So how much muscle are we talking here? Perhaps my wording was incorrect. Muscle implies physicality. Oh, so you got mages then? Really, I mean, contracts, legalese. Mages are in woefully short supply, at least outside of Felbaroche. Can't you see it on their faces, Wink? They have nothing. I would say roll insight before you... Well, you can make that claim, but you can go ahead and roll insight against it. I say this as I roll insight. (laughs) (laughs) that is a 15 Tass slumps down a little bit that statement becomes more and more true as the days pass there was a time though where it was less true but the muscle was more contractual financial boring but it worked for a time but those same contracts enabled Felbaroth to slip away 
sell themselves off and get rid of us and put the workers, the people at stake. Contracts are with people though, right? Are you still in contact with any of the people whose contracts got nullified? I'm sure I could visit them, but in no way would Yubao be able to assist these companies or their management. Why is Yubao standing for this? These dissolution of these contracts. Isn't that what they're for? To prevent this sort of thing from happening? I should have had the foresight, but when you work with companies like Phil Baroche, this is their expertise. Finding a way out of contracts. I have to say, if I was a member of your union, I wouldn't be very happy about it. I have to say, sorry if that was a little forward. I'm uh, not too happy about what I'm hearing. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that last sorry sent me. He was jib, right? That's right. You're not wrong. I can tell you've been in the union. The anger is what keeps us. It's what drives us. I'm angry. So many of the people that I can no longer protect are angry. So many of the people that can no longer serve the union are angry. We think it's time to fight a different fight outside of contracts. Like with swords and stuff like that? Well, I don't think we should get that far, Roman. We'd like to avoid it if we can. I'm not foolish, and if the three of you happen to go to the debate, I'm sure you all picked up on it, but... Politically, we're fighting a losing fight. I may be optimistic, I'm not ignorant, but we think there's a way we can turn this in our favor. And if the contracts won't allow Tash to do the important work that we need done, maybe we give power back to the people. <laughs> Says the would-be lord. Says the would-be lord. Without any fighters. Let us cut to the point. What do you want with us? I point to Simon. This one. He has told us of a vision that I have had. A terrible, monstrous storm, and people vanishing without even a trace. This is why I am here, why I am interested in what you have to say. But all you have done is spoken of, words without meaning. Roman slowly holds up one finger to you, Everett, just a moment. Takes that finger and points to you, Wink. I could care less about the speaker. Win or lose, we need to affect the change. This is just an avenue that we see in front of us, outside of contracts. I'm open to something else. But if you'd allow us the opportunity, I think we can do better than Tragen. If we want to dissolve the idea of a speaker, I could give a shit. A title's a title. I'm open to other options. But I think we have something in front of us, an opportunity that we have to take. I think the three of you could help us. Everett scoffs and leans against the nearest wall. <laughs> I am going to roll insight on that. Only a nine. Can I maybe give some aid to Wink on that? Yeah, I mean, you can also roll your own insight. Yeah, it's sort of hard to help an insight check. Sure. That's a 13. Yeah, on a 13, and even on your nine, Wink, you get the sense that there's a genuineness behind what Roman is saying and feeling if a little bit of theatrics meant to inspire you to their cause. He's not lying. He's not deceiving. But he might be playing up and trying to stir you up a little bit, but... The feeling you get from Roman is pretty genuine. All right, let's hear it. In a moment, Everett, I want all three of you to feel good about this work. It is very important to the people. You have questions. I may have answers. How could you possibly have answers for the things that I have been seeing at night? Because I believe what you are seeing at night is remnants of Oral herself. How this connection came to be, I cannot say. But you say you see visions of blizzards, people vanishing. A little girl. Hands, begging hands in the snow. There is only one being that can stir a blizzard out of thin air. There is only one being that can make people disappear. It is Oral herself. I do not know where you come from. I know nothing of a little girl in your visions. But I know of Oral. I am confident that this is who you see. Our journey may take us to her, though I hope not. Oral cannot simply be killed, and this is part of why we need you. Tregan and Felborosh are working together to incite fear in everyone, to try and kill Oro. This is a fool's endeavor. She cannot be killed. If one were to vanquish her, she would go away for a time, but she would come back. So long as anyone in Icewind Dale believes in her and pays her tribute, she never goes away. And they know this. They know this and they do not care because we believe this is simply to justify Moro Felborosh becoming Roman interjects, becoming a weapons manufacturer. That's the theory, and we'd like you to help prove it. Countless people will die throwing themselves at this plight to kill Oro. And it's all once again because Felborosh deems it to be important. But once again, it's just to protect their bottom line. Oro is not of this world. She is cold. All she feels is vengeance. 
There was a time, many years ago, centuries, she was aligned with three gods. But Oro's power grew rapidly, unfailingly. Fearing this, the gods cast her aside. She was exiled to Icewind Dale. In that cold isolation, her strength, it did not grow as fast, but it grew. Feeling nothing but betrayal for centuries, her magic transformed, and now, so long as there is servitude, so long as there is devotion, she will never die. So many people of Icewind Dale are at risk if Felbarosh and Tregan get their way. We need to expose them before their message grows in popularity, before Felbarosh begins the work, before workers are sent to Solstice Island for nothing but death. Where is this Solstice Island? From here, you would take the riverway out to the east and up north to where the edge of Icewind Dale sits. From there, you would go north over the sea and you would see Solstice Isle, a large skull sitting atop its hills. This is known as Grimskale. This is where she lives. Must be pretty cold up there, even north of here. It is cold and it is terrifying. I have never stepped foot, but they say that the moment you do, she'll know where you are. Look, way I see it, you got two problems, right? But I don't think you have any plan at all as to addressing either of them. I mean, are you going to let Thail Barash put your people through a meat grinder? Are you going to let Oral keep taking her pound of flesh? What are you doing here? What do you need us to do? Well said, Wink. Same question. Tash will speak up. We think that the biggest threat right now is Fail Baroche. Oral is a problem we've lived with for many years, and we can keep living with that problem and find longer-term solutions, of which Roman has many. Fail Baroche is an immediate threat. I say that outside of my own vengeance. But there are real consequences for what could happen if we don't stop what we believe they're trying to do. I hope we're wrong. What we'd like to do, what we need your help for, what we hope we can convince you to do, is to go to the Felbarosh headquarters. Tomorrow, as they do every week, Felbarosh will be hosting a recruiting event. For obvious reasons, I can't go in. We would love for the three of you to make your way inside and try to find what you can. Our best guess? Documentation somewhere in the finance department? But anything you can find that supports our theories, we would appreciate it. That sounds kind of foolhardy, no? Go straight into the lair of the beast. This is the best idea you got. Go in the front door and... Sorry, I'm speaking out of turn again. Sorry. Anybody else have any other concerns? What do we get in return for this foolhardy, Aaron? Roman will stand up and pace around a little bit. He'll be crossing his arms. He looks like he's pondering. Without any insight roll, his energy is like definitely tense, nervous. I'd like to think that the future that we envision for Icewind Dale has something rewarding for all of you in it. I will admit I do not have the money that Fail Barash does, so I can't promise you and you should not expect any form of payment that can match what he can give you. But Everett, Simon is my right hand. Oral is of extreme interest to him, and finding out how we can live in a world where, as you say, Wink, that pound of flesh weighs a little bit less on all of us. Well, I think you might find some answers to your visions, Everett, because there's going to be a lot more. That all sound real sweet, but we can't eat aspirations and we can't eat answers. Okay, so it's down to cost. I'm not saying I can be bought, but I do need some sort of remuneration if we're undertaking this potentially dangerous activity on your behalf. Absolutely. What else are we doing here, if not making sure that everyone in Icewind Dale, whether resident or visitor or potential friend, is fed and safe? To that end, I can promise you. But, Everett, Jib, is there a cost? Cost? Uh, you know, I'm not even really sure how I got here. Uh, got more gold in my pocket than I've ever had in my life, so I'm doing pretty good there. I, uh, don't know. I got a lot of moral questions to ponder, but as far as gold goes, I think I'm set for a while. Everett, is this down to money? I've gotten this far by doing things that others would have such moral questions about. This is true. Part of me does not believe yet that this oral is to be my fate. Is to be the reason, the real reason, why I still walk this realm. But if it is, you will take me to her domain, to this grim scholar. And if not... I will kill you. Roll intimidation because you said it that way. <laughs> Dirty 20. I mean, this guy's DC was like fucking one, but uh, <laughs> he just looks down and then looks over to Simon and Simon says, our interests align, my friend. I look to Wink. Wink drums their fingers pensively on the table. 
What make you think the truth is going to change anything? That's the question, isn't it? Roman says. We don't have a militia, like you said. Our militia's got to be the people, if that's the way this has to go. They've been beat down for so long. You can see now Roman's looking down at the table. Like, he's just hyper-focused. He's not looking at any of you directly. He's deep in whatever he's feeling as he says this. The pessimist in me, the heartbroken in me, wonders if anything will ever change their mind. They've accepted and endured so much. The cold has left them that way. They've had to be that way. Wink, I can't promise you that it's going to change anything. But what I can promise you is that our message has not been working. And sometimes people don't even know they're being abused until they see it right in front of them, until they read it on a piece of paper. We're just hoping that this is it. We're hoping we're right. And if we're right, this is enough to get the people moving. I don't need to be speaker to let that happen. I don't. Wink gives a shallow nod. All right. But y'all best be ready to start doing the work. Y'all were organized before, and you don't need a militia to fight. You don't need an army. You don't need much in terms of weapons and whatnot. But you need to be putting fighting people. If they're kicked down and beat down like you say, I'm not from here. I can't speak to them. But whatever you're saying isn't helping, and maybe this will help what we get. But I guess all I'm asking of you is don't think that your ideas and your way of doing things is the only way you're going to get through to folk. Try to meet them where they are. Because if you want to claim to lead these people, you can't do it from standing on a stage above them. you got to be standing beside them. And that's why I wanted to talk to Tash here, because I think that she would understand that. That's why I'm so grateful to have Tash in my corner. Because while I do the work and learn to meet the people where they are, she's been there. She's helping me get there faster than I ever could without her. Tash gives like a proud smile at that. Sounds like a politician's answer to me. If it's the best we got, then it's the best we got. I know you didn't mean it as such, Jib, but as someone that's been failing at being a politician, it honestly kind of feels good to hear it. And he gives a small little chuckle. Well, I'm glad I can make you feel good, my friend. You can roll insight on that. Five. He smiled. (laughs) I smile back. (laughs) but it's a forced smile. Simon will speak up. I am happy that what we say in some way resonates with you all. On the matter of logistics, I believe Vitus has put you up for the evening. As far as I know, they do not know you're working with us. If you want the free lodging, you're welcome to it. Any moral objections, let me know. We will make an arrangement for a room. I quit back at the debate, so I'll probably need a room, but... (laughs) Where were the three of you staying? North Look, I think. Okay, the North Look. Yeah, it's a nice sort of establishment. Simon reaches casually into his pocket and pulls out three gold. It's not much, but it's definitely going to be enough for a good amount of stay. This for you and if your friends need it too. Appreciate it. I would expect to be at Felbrosh headquarters at midday tomorrow. If you look here, it is located here in Brinshender. He points to a map and you all just take note of the location. It's kind of northeast center of town. And by the way, just Brinshender is a circular shaped city for what it's worth. Fun factoid. Sorry, okay. what's in the north? In the northeast? Felbrosh the... headquarters where you have to go midday tomorrow. Felbrosh headquarters. Got it. Jimmy, you got lost in the what? In the jeppy? The sentence structure. Yeah. Of the... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> intending for that to be an on mic. <laughs> insult of jeppy's sentence like not every sentence is perfect few are yeah and not every pronunciation of every word is perfect all right everett's out the door so anyways simon the alkalite of uh no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> i said what i said everett's out the door <laughs> as you leave tash will stand up wait the three of you working for vetus i think you should know there are rumors that kessa is working under duress we don't know much more than that yet but if you see anything that would insinuate such at Felbrosh, it might be nice to bring it back to us. If the people turn against Vetus and Felbrosh, and she is working under duress, it'd be good to save her from that wrath. Again, it's just rumor mill. Everett does sort of stop in the doorway as he's walking out to hear this, pauses, and then keeps going. Thanks for the tip. Worth looking into. Wink's like, but she was kind of rude. But I think you ought to concern yourself more with The people who've had their unions dissolved. They're probably hankering for a fight. Try and get their hackles up. That's a good well to go digging. I would agree. That'll be our priority. All right. Well, it's a pleasure meeting all of you. I guess I'll see you around. Thank you three. Sincerely. All right. You make your way out. You are back in town. You leave the Rinky Dink campaign headquarters. (laughs) We leave the Rinky Dink. You are... Rink McDink. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you are northwest of the center of town. You just have to go up north about 
eight or ten blocks or so, it'll probably take a 30 minute walk to the inn. So if there's anything, I know Everett was kind of jonesing to say something. So if you want to go ahead and do that as you all begin your walk north towards the inn, unless there's something else you want to do before you head out. I will say right now, this is after the debate. It's starting to get a little dark out now. So you suspect by the time you get there and settle in, it'll be a good time to hang out at the inn or go get a drink. About three blocks away, Wink says, what a pack of clueless yuppies. I could say the same in so few words. Wink. The more time I spend in your company, the more I believe we agree on things. Straightforward, yes. Uh, As if anyone in this whole world would possibly think play the hero was actually just about doing the right thing. Why, Everett, I'm almost blushing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Do you still have this sending stone? I gave it to Garen when I quit last night. That is too bad. I recast Disguise Self, this time taking the form of Felbarash, and I just continue walking, and after the frost bite and diamond dust fade off the new form, it could have been a great asset in our undermining of our new adversary. Don't forgive me. I was a bit emotional today. Perhaps I wasn't acting as coldly logical as you tend to do. (laughs) Think nothing of it. And then I drop the form. That's cool shit. You make your way safely, soundly, without any checks or rolls to the North Look and make your way inside. Your absolute bestie, Northy Lookman, hanging out. Doing their thing. Again, late enough where you could reasonably kind of retire or grab a drink. Who's up for a drink? Yeah, for sure. Normally, I would object, but... All right. How's it going, Northy? <laughs> what how we feeling about three pints? Mm. Northy currently just nods, shrugs. Still recovering from the simulation breakdown last <laughs> night, I see. <laughs> yeah. It was very hard on me to be referred to as the NPC. <laughs> Mulling it over with my therapist, I've decided to talk less... The less of a character I am, the less it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that's safe for you, right? If you're important to us, then there's a target on your back. Oh, I didn't even think of that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> You've said too much, Wink. Let's get the beers and get out of here. <laughs> you grab the beers, you pay the barkeep, Northy Lookman. You can all give me a perception check if you want to take a survey of who's hanging out where and what and doing what. Yeah. I think Wink would like to keep an eye out and see if there are any other Vetus people lodging here. But is going to fail with a five. Yeah, on a five, it's probably hard to make anybody out in specific, whether it's even just uniforms or anything in the crowd. I've got a nine. I got a nat 20. Okay. Are both of you looking for the same thing or are you looking for something else? I'm looking for a table. <laughs> and I'm looking for suspicious looking figures. There are lots of tables. Jim's looking for an empty table. You're looking for an empty table. You see lots of tables. You're looking for empty an empty chairs one. chairs at empty tables. Yes, I'm looking for an empty table. You find a couple, but they're like in the center of the action. It might be a little loud where you're going to. SFX note, increase my friends, the... Inc- my friends. Thank you. Sorry. On my... <laughs> What is that? It's okay. Like on, <laughs> on my nine, can I find a table that's a little more discreet, somewhere we might be able to have a conversation over some drinks? You don't find one discreet. You only find them kind of in the center. But I will say that you feel pretty confident that on a nine, the room is pretty full and there's a lot of room noise. So you could talk to each other at a reasonable volume and not be overheard just from the room noise itself. On a 20, Everett, you don't see anyone that is dressed up in any way that would indicate Vetus at all. And further, you don't see any faces you recognize from any of the Vetus people that were at the debate or when you went to their HQ. So if there is someone, they're either in plain clothes, but again, on a 20, you can be pretty confident there's no one here. And definitely no one here on an official capacity. On my net... 20, do I see Flint McRocky? <laughs> Unfortunately, Flint McRocky is not at the North Look at this hour. All right, fine. <sighs> this is too bad. I love that Flint McRocky. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> You see, you know, most of the tables are filled with people. You see one table with a handful of people and you see a halfling woman with long hair and she seems to be like the life of the party. So you don't see anyone suspicious, but you see that person as, oh, they stand out. All right, let's sit. So are we really doing this? Well, I'd wish the opposition to Fail Barash and Vetus were a bit stiffer, but between them and Ezek, they're the only opposition I've done encountered. That's right. Pretty weak. 
They could use us. Are we doing this? Even amidst this political drama, you must understand I have to find my answers. That threat was not a hollow one. I am not one to make hollow threats. I must find out these answers. And as it happens, this side seems for now to be able to get me closer. But I sort of put my drink on the table. It also happens to keep our frozen little band together. Well, that's a real nice thought, Everett. (laughs) Thanks for saying that. A frozen little band. I have to say, it was Vetus that brought me here, but I do feel more of a kinship with you two than with anybody else back at the company. And here I thought we got along so well with that barrage driver. (laughs) Hey, that barrage driver was just doing his job. Yeah, I suppose. How should we approach this, then? Well, aside from there being less of me to see, I got some magic that can make it so I can be unseen. And I as well, in my own way. If you can get us all in discreetly. I'm pretty good at swinging a sword. I think it only works for me. And there really wasn't much mention of fighting, anyway. Perhaps some kind of distraction? Yeah? What do you got in mind? Well, there's this bird that's been following me around. <laughs> Seems to do whatever I seem to want it to do, so uh could definitely employ that in some way. There's also the benefit of, I do think I kind of seem like I belong here. In fact, probably could get a job with Felbarash. Go through those motions there. All that rope hauling experience you got? Yeah, I'll bet. Always need people to haul ropes. See, it helps being a sea elf, a water-faring person. You know, in the loading and unloading of ships, there's a lot of hauling rope. Helps to be able to breathe underwater, to be able to swim, even to be able to consort with the types of aquatic creatures. Anyway, I'm going on and on about this. Well, yes, that's very good, Mr. Jib. What would you say is your greatest strength? And what would you say is your greatest weakness? I'm pretending to be a, a job interviewer here. Oh, it's very clever. Uh, I would say my greatest strength is probably my strength, and my greatest weakness is probably, well, I got so many of them, it's hard to choose just one. So that, maybe that's my weakness. Got too many weaknesses. Can you work nights and weekends? Well, yeah, I don't really sleep too much on account of being an elf, so, uh... All right, Mr. Jib, you're hired! I, like, stick out an arm. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Yeah, I think you'll do just fine. So, while Jib's... Going through the whole interview process, Everett, you can disguise yourself and I can sneak about and maybe we can get our hands on some evidence for Roman and tashing them. Simple enough. And uh, I'll still be around if you need any backup, you know, of the uh, strength variety. I wonder if it makes sense to go and case the joint a bit before we went in, just so we know where we might want to be going. It's not a bad idea. Maybe we'll get there early tomorrow. Or were you thinking under the cover of night? Well, I don't see too good in the dark, but if either of you want to go check it out tonight, I won't stop you, but show up a little early, maybe see if we can get some sort of floor plan or something like that. That is wise. Perhaps, Jib, you and I, this evening after our usual staring out, (laughs) we shall go, as you say, in the cover of night. Well, that sounds delightful. Looking forward to it. And we will share whatever we find, of course, with me. Okay, sounds like a plan. Jib drinks his entire beer right now and then sets down the mug, stands up from the chair. You got a burp in there, Jimmy? We'll get something in post. (laughs) Can't wait to put burp marker. (laughs) (laughs) That's a real pitter-patter moment. (laughs) He stands up and his head goes out of the frame. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so is it bedtime for Wink, and do we want to roleplay looking out the window? staring out the window time? No. (laughs) One thing I do want to get in. Yeah, of course. Before we go to bed, but not in the bar, once we're in the room. Wink would open their pack and just show the two sticks of explosive they have to Everett and Jib. I'd also be, if we can find a nice spot to put these that might cause some significant disruption... Fail Barash's operations? Just like Isaac, really. Just like Isaac, but actually thinking. Right. <laughs> well, it does seem like fun to make things explode. Never done it myself, but like to try it. Speaking of things that do not belong to you, I had a run-in with a blacksmith in our conversations. He seemed quite interested in the Wraithesites. The notion that Roman thought that Felborash was going to make weapons, or is, is not a difficult conclusion to come to. There may be 
something of this sort in line for our company in the future. As you say this, Everett, you remember your time meeting a cast of colorful salespeople, and you remember the pouch. Mm -hmm. I would say at this point, it's been with you all day. It's slightly magical. I'd say you attune to it. If anything, I know I sent you this, but I want to let everyone else know what it is. It does require attunement. That makes sense. You think back on that pouch that you were given, and you now understand its magical properties. What you now have is what's known as nether sand. You can... Rub this substance on your bow, and what it will do is once per long rest, grant you plus one to your attack roll and plus two to damage on that attack. And I rub that on my what? Longbow, right? <laughs> Never mind. Are you really? No. Really? <laughs> no, strike that. That's done. Oh, no, that's that's, that's saying. That's saying. No, was no, that God, a, no. Was that phallic in nature? Andy, are you proud oh, of that? Or you feel good about that content? <laughs> no. I'm glad you don't. Stew in your own shame. Shit's absolutely going in the episode. I was like, wait, did I get their weapon wrong? No, surely they're using a... Oh, my God. It's a child. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, so you place it on your long bow to do some extra dammies, hopefully. On the bow itself? I don't know enough about bow terminology, but like where the arrow would meet the bow itself. Like that right there. I see. I don't know what the fuck that's called. And I type loud, and I don't feel like doing it right now. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm going to go to my spot at the window. We rest. <laughs> yeah. Trance for a little bit. Come out of my trance in the early morning. What's Everett doing? I'm already awake. Careful not to wake Wink. I gesture to Everett. Let's go. And we're out the door. Let's focus on Wink. The camera pans. <laughs> it's a real prancing pony situation. Yeah. <laughs> We may check in to see which sheep you are on in your count as we progress through this. All right, cool. I would like to roll stealth. As you get close to the Felbarash building, absolutely go ahead and roll for it. 23. 6. All right. Oh, God. Both of you make me a perception check. 12. Dirty 20. Cool. Yeah, as you're approaching the building, it is a large brick rectangular building. Not really anything special about it on the outside, but you don't see anyone. Even on your six jib, you're not spotted. Seem to be fine. No dangers looming at all, but you're still maybe two blocks away. As you get closer, Everett, your stealth check holds. Jimmy, make one more as you get closer. I would like to aid jib. Okay. How? Describe that. Throw a blanket on him or... (laughs) Well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Give me no. this flavor. Oh, man. No, by maybe he's shuffling in the snow too hard, or there's some ice that he keeps cracking and just being loud, generally pointing out shadows to walk in, or. You help him by telling him he's doing a bad job. Jibba, your footfalls are oh so loud. All right. Like this. See, no sound. No sound at all. No sound at all. Wow. Yeah, take take that advantage all day. That's beautiful. All right. Thanks for the constructive criticism, pal. <laughs> <laughs> that is a dirty 20. <laughs> beautiful. All right. Neither seen nor heard. I roll my eyes from beneath my wrappings. You are now on the same block as the Fail Barash building. Both go ahead and make me another perception check. Another 12. A 25. Jesus. All right. Nice. Okay, cool. Front of the building... You see immediately on both your rolls easily. The doors are lined with a solid iron and their hinges are made of iron, but the center of both of them is made of a very thick tempered glass. So you can see into the building from the outside. What you see immediately is a large wall with a huge map on it. On the 25, you can, even at the distance, Read the map relatively clearly, even though the lettering is small, Everett. What you see is a map of the building, a floor plan of what this building contains in it. You see labeling for different rooms. You see processing plant, cafeteria, corporate offices, research and development. You see finance, marketing, sales. You see all these different departments of the headquarter building itself. You are able to easily tell where certain things are should you get inside and need to navigate it. You would have that guide for you. As I'm looking at it right now, the one that sticks out... the most is the R&D. Where does it seem like on the map that is generally in relationship to the building as a whole? So because you rolled high, I'm just going to give you the details. You see a couple of maybe small rooms ahead of this foyer area that you're looking into is the processing plant. It makes up a large piece of the kind of center middle of the building, the left side. The right side of that is that cafeteria area. And then the remaining half of the building is much smaller blocks of space. R&D, finance, again, all those pieces there. R&D, 
you see sitting maybe a room or two behind the cafeteria, again, on the right side of the map. This all seems like it's one floor. What you can see is it looks to be a single floor plan, but you do see iconography in some of the other rooms that insinuate like a staircase. So what you would best guess is that the processing plant and cafeteria are larger, taller rooms, and that some of those departments in the back of the building may have two floors to them to accommodate that vertical space. But otherwise, like those are the departments and that's where they're laid out. Jib, I can see a map within the door. I think I have a good sense of where research may be done. Come, let us go to the side. Perhaps we can find windows or another way in. All right. I'd like to lead Jib around to see if we could find windows or another way in. We go. All right, cool. (laughs) You can round the corner. You going left or right around the building? If it looked like that was on the right side, we'll go around right. All right, sounds good. Were there, like, sconces or torches by the front door or something? It was pretty poorly lit, honestly. There were no sconces. There were no flames or anything like that. But there seemed to be some sort of illumination coming from light fixtures, but Everett might not know exactly what was causing that light. Cool. Moving on. Yeah. You're on the right side of this building. Go ahead and make me a perception check to see what you find there. That's another 25. Jib? I'm just along for the ride with a seven. Yeah. On a 25, Everett, you see the side of a brick building. You don't see any kind of fire escape or ladder there. The alleyway itself ends the end of the building. It doesn't go off into another block. There actually really isn't much of note here. It does not look like there is anything you spot. I am reminded, Jib, that bird, are you able to summon it? Perhaps you can see what is above for us. Sure. Jib turns his eyes to the sky. The bird is flying over right at that moment. Hell yeah. (laughs) And Jib's eyes are going to go completely white. And now I'm looking through the bird's eyes. Beautiful. Give me a perception check. I'll tell you what you see up top. (laughs) All right. That's a 10. On a 10, you don't see too much. You definitely don't see any patrol units up on the roof or anything like that. The building seems to be pretty unoccupied, at least on the outside at night. What your bird friend is able to see, there seems to be a door, probably an access door for someone to come up and check on vents or anything like that coming from the processing plant. But on a 10 and with the bird's speed flying overhead, you don't get a really good sense of where in the buildings those things lead to. There does seem to be a way in on the roof, but it's hard to tell where it goes. Ah, This is promising. We should be off. Thank you. Jib's eyes return to their normal green color and he says, all right, let's get out of here. All right. I'd say you have enough time to get back to the north look and settle back in maybe chill for a little bit and that way you could make your way back here with wink as a unit anything the three of you want to do before you make your way back to fail brush hq wink actually does want to do some shopping in the morning they get up real early is there like a hardware store in town yep it's called deuce not ace okay wink goes to deuce <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> because that is what has been presented to me. And would pick up a hammer, a crowbar, a pack of a thousand ball bearings. Yes! And if there are any sort of things that interact with locks akin to a set of thieves tools, I would also like to pick those up. Give me a moment here and come up with cost for you. Because I don't have it memorized. Uh, generally, I looked this up while they were doing their recon. Oh, beautiful. It would run about 29 gold pieces for all of that. Nothing but trust on this side of the table, Scala. So 29 gold pieces it is. Okay. Ain't even gonna make the bard haggle. I was looking for a new sword that, by my estimate, costs about 105 gold. It's like a magic weapon. It's plus two or three, maybe. <laughs> Should okay, run around Scala Attorney at Rules Law is yeah, going to no, yeah. and say bullshit. And instead I get try. the DC 10, 1D6 poison. <laughs> no. Okay. You hand Hammer McNail Gun the 29 gold and are off with your life. <laughs> <sighs> yes, I do that. Anything else any of the three of you want to do before we call it midday next day and we are walking towards Phil Barash HQ? I don't think so. All right, cool. That's a great place to end it. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. With music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.